Ali Haji Sheik is back kicking off for Michigan. That is Manny Henry deep along with Bobby Straub at the goal line for the Gophers. Also back to receive Kerry Glenn, number eight. And you see Sheik, who lost his kicking job because of a thigh bruise last week to young Bob Bergeron, who did pretty well. But Sheik has the strongest leg. And he gets one away that will go deep. And right out of the end of it, Sheik gets this one underway. Minnesota gets possession. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Have just an absolutely beautiful afternoon in Minneapolis. 63 degrees right now and a wind from the northwest 14 miles per hour. Unusual field, Jim, in that it's an east-west layout. Sun is not really a factor except in the one far corner, and that shouldn't be a problem as the afternoon wears on. Most fields are north-south because of the sun side. You don't like that down in the end of the field so it can get in the receiver's eye. Mike Hohensey, the quarterback, gets it started. They run tailback Jacobs into the line. Very little yardage there on the right side of the Gopher offense. Mike Lemerand on the tackle. In fact, the gain, if anything, is a half a yard. We'll call it second down and nine, however. Jacobs 40 and Manny Henry 37 are behind Mike Hohensey. And the Gophers looking to pass on second down. Man open, didn't quite get to it. Intended for Ron Weckbacker, 19, and Brian Carpenter made the dive in front of him and almost came up with an interception. Brian's getting his first start in four weeks. He's had ankle troubles and he hasn't been in the lineup and uh, he gets the start today uh, because uh, he's looked good in practice. The injury is healed. That one took too long to develop. Brian came up, was able to react to the ball, almost made the interception. Third down and nine. Now you figure they have to throw. Hohensey looks at the Michigan defense. And throw it is. Over the middle, tipped and out of the hands of Bostic. Intended for Chester Cooper deep, and Brian Carpenter got a hand on it, knocked it away, and it'll be fourth and nine. Minnesota will have to punt. The key thing, I think, on both passes that they threw is there was good coverage, and uh, Owens, he threw it into crowds, so Michigan defensively in their secondary seems to be doing a pretty good job, has the patterns of the Minnesota wide receivers pretty well down. That is Paul Blanchard, the gopher punter. Deep to receive for Michigan, Anthony Carter. Back about the Wolverine 40 yard line. Blanchard's punt is a beauty. Carter at the 35. And he couldn't quite get through the line of Gophers coming down. Jay Carroll, first man down, the tight end, made the tackle. Michigan's ball, first and 10, starting at their own 38 yard line. 44 yards on the punt by Blanchard. Michigan's offense, the question mark, you might look for a passing game here. A year ago, Anthony Carter had a great afternoon on a very cold and snowy day. And today, circumstances are right for the throwing game. Steve Smith, Stanley Edwards, Butch Wolfolk in a line offensively for Michigan. Stanley Edwards straight ahead over the 40-yard line to about the 42. Tackle made by Glenn Howard, middle linebacker. Although it's probably incorrect to call him a middle linebacker because they have two linebackers. One linebacker who shifts to the strong side of the field. Their X player and he alternates with a defensive back who goes the other way of that extra linebacker. Plus they run a four man front up front with four down linemen. Now it's a very trappable defensive look up front. Now look for Stanley Edwards to get the ball a little bit more because he is a good back but the line can get those trap blocks. Second down and six. It's Butch Wolfolk, and there is no running room coming in to get him. Linebacker Glenn Sislevich. And he is the man we were just speaking about, the linebacker who flops from side to side and tries to be in the right spot. And he certainly was that time. Well, I think Shibzovich is going to be on Butch Wolfolk's tail all day long. I think his assignment is look out for Butch. Make sure when he gets the ball, you're nearby. 
No gain on the play. In fact, he lost a yard. Call it third down and seven. A throwing situation for Michigan. That's if Minnesota will give it to them with their defense. Smith to try. He runs out of it. And a good game. Gets the first down into Minnesota territory. All down from behind by Jim Fonhorst, 89. One of the keys to Michigan's offense is Steve Smith today because he is the man that Bo Schembechler says in the defense that Minnesota is running, he's the man that has to make all the right decisions when they get to the point of attack. In that instance, he had good time to throw, but secondary coverage downfield kept Michigan's receivers covered. He made the good scramble with his quick feet to get the first. First down at the Minnesota 49. Betts moves over to the other side. Little tight end shift. And that's the way they run with Butch Wolfolk. He slashes inside the 45-yard line of the Gophers. Pickup of about four by Wolfolk before he is knocked down. Minnesota with a good defense, but this a chess game between the coaches. Joe Salem and Bo Schembecker as they try to put strength to strength. That gain of four yards, Larry, for Butch Wolfolk today gives him a thousand yards on the season. Well, I think he lost a yard earlier, Jim. Might have to get one more for us. On second down and six. Go with Butch again. Tries to get outside and cannot. He eluded the tackle of Andre Harris. Came up quickly and made the stop on Wolfolk. Penalty flag is down. Ball is at the 44 yard line. And it's against Michigan. It's kind of penalty you just don't like to see in an opening drive because your offensive line has got to establish some kind of ability up front to knock the defense off the ball. And when you have to hold them, you know that the offensive line is having trouble. That can give confidence to the defensive line. And in these games, we've seen what confidence can do. The team that's not supposed to be in it gets that confidence, and they can come up and upset you. Wisconsin, Iowa, just to name, name a couple. <laughs> Matter of fact, then Minnesota who gathered a great deal of confidence in Iowa City last week, knocking the Hawkeyes into a scramble in the Big Ten race. Back to the Michigan 45-yard line, where it will be second down and 16. With Minnesota. So Concerned with Anthony Carter and, and the great day he had with them last year. You might see Michigan try to go to the tight end or Vincent Bean on the other side. Anthony is split to this side of the field as the Gopher defense shuffles over one step. And the throwing down it is. Smith for Anthony. He's got him. Little fake on the outside man, Andre Harris. Doesn't get him much, but a couple of extra yards. And that should be first down. Real nice pass pattern, one that they allowed the underneath coverage have to cover another guy. That freed Anthony up on the deep coverage. He just makes a deep out cut, gets in front of the defender, and then tries to get outside. Does a good job, Steve Smith delivering the ball on a big second down and long play. Now it is first down. 32-yard line of Minnesota. And the Gophers juggle their defense. Anthony Carter on the far side of the field. Instead, it's Stanley Edwards cutting behind the block of Kurt Becker. Edwards inside the 20-yard line. Another Michigan first down. Good run by Stanley Edwards to the 18-yard line of Minnesota. Michigan on the move. Bo has said he'd like to see Stanley get the ball more. He's averaging 5.7 yards a carry, but he's only had it 41 carries this year. And with that run, a gain of 10, 12 yards, he goes over 2,000 yards for his career at Michigan. Option play. Pitch goes back to Wolfolk. Having a little trouble. He is finally met at the corner by Harris and knocked out of bounds. Got it up to about the 13-yard line, though. That is a uh, awkward-looking five-yard gain. The reason it was awkward is because Smith was forced to pitch it a little late, and he was almost being tackled when he pitched it. It wasn't real good. Give Butch credit for holding on to the ball that was really pitched at his hip. Second down and five. 
Butch over a thousand yards on the year now. And they can't stop him. He has had some good games here in Minnesota against the Gophers. Smith to throw, look out, but over the head of Anthony Carter. Steve Smith came close to being sacked, got rid of the ball in time, but it was a little behind and a little high for AC. Anthony came open. Uh, the pattern was there. It's just that he had a good rush from the backside. Minnesota running the blitz. Smith had to throw it early and threw it over his head. Third down and five. IG Sheik is available this week. Of course, so is Bergeron, who kicked the field goal last week. And this certainly within the range of both of them. Unless the Wolverines can convert to another first down. Dunaway in motion. Wopo trapped. Nowhere to go, really. All kinds of help. Fred Orgus came in. Kevin Kellen was also there. And Butch lost a little back to the 15-yard line. Michigan running into the short side of the field, figuring with Minnesota shifting their defense to the strength or to the wide side, there should be something open to that short side. But Minnesota adjusted beautifully, came back, stopped Wolfolk, no gain. And so it is a field goal attempt from the 22-yard line, 32 yards in total. Sheik sends it up, wobbly knuckling through the crossbars. And with minutes and 34 seconds left in the first quarter. It's now Michigan 3, Minnesota nothing. Haji Sheik set to kick off again and he sends one deep again. All the way to the back of the end zone. No run back possible. After an exchange of punts we pick up action later in the quarter. Seven yard line first and ten. Don't like to throw from here, but might well have to. Try the pitch to Jacobs, and he has got very little running room. Gergash is there. Carlton Rose also there, and he really stacked the play up before it could get very far. He ran into, Jacobs ran into the back of Rose. But Carlton quickly turned around and helped make the tackle along with Gergash. Second down, and they've still got nine yards to go. The flow to the ball is very quick from Michigan. Uh, they just get to the football. All, both linebackers, the outside linebacker, Lemoran coming in there, just took too long to develop, and there weren't enough people blocked behind the line of scrimmage. The linebackers had no trouble getting to it. Middle guard Al Sinsich also there. Tried the fullback, Henry. He's over the 10-yard line, but Tony Osborne is hanging on to Manny Henry. Short yardage, so again, it's third and long. Minnesota faced with throw the ball or have to kick it again and give Michigan good field position, probably no worse than midfield. Oh, it's kind of surprising that Minnesota isn't able to run on Michigan because Michigan against the rush hasn't been that tough this year, and Minnesota is ranked fifth in the conference, averaging 177 yards on the ground. So they do rush the ball fairly well, but not today. Third down and six. They try Henry again, and Gergash and Lemoran close the hole. It's open just briefly. Short of the 15-yard line, well short of a first down. The crowd expressing displeasure the offense. One thing I think we should make note of at this point, they've got to take advantage of these kinds of things. Anthony Carter at about the... If he can get it away, just barely, and a penalty flag, he will give the Gophers the football. Oh, they so close, they got Paul Blanchard. The Wolverines gambled, but they're coming through the middle. This is a tough way, coming up the middle. Down. He ran into the kicker's leg. Good call by the referee. It's the only offense that Minnesota has had. A penalty on Michigan, trying to block and it was a great punt anyway. Traveling in the air some uh, 55 yards. Amazing that Blanchard hit one that good with all the pressure coming at him. And the, the windup is just an offensive first down for the Gophers at their own 28-yard line, first and 10. 
better field position to work with. And Hohensee goes right to the air. Jacobs, he's got him, and Gergash wraps him up. 36-37 yard line. That, however, is their best first down play to date and the first completion for Hohensee. Second down and three after the gain of seven through the air. Boy, away from your goal line certainly gives your offense some more opportunity to move. Fullback Henry. Sinsich had him for a minute, couldn't hang on, and Bostic comes up to get him behind the line of scrimmage. They forced him to go outside, and Bostic reacted after Sinsich slowed the play down but couldn't quite make the tackle. But you'd like to see that guy wrap him up and make that tackle. He had a good, clean shot at him. Actually knocked him back about a yard, but didn't wrap him up. That's the fundamental of tackling. Wrap those arms around the legs and make that tackle secure. Loss of a yard, third down and four. 35-yard line of Minnesota. Little toss out here for Jacobs. He got it. Super catch, and it's a first down. Gergash makes the tackle, but a ball perfectly thrown over Gergash and dropped right into the arms of tailback Frank Jacobs. You're absolutely right. The ball, one, was perfectly thrown, and two, Michigan had good coverage. Gergash one-on-one -on -one with Jacobs. The ball just laid right in there, beautifully dropped over Girgash's head. Call it the 46-yard line of Minnesota, first and 10. The Gophers finally getting something going. That penalty gave them a break, but they are taking advantage of it now. Jacobs trying to sweep. Get a little blocking over there, and Girgash again comes over to make the tackle with an assist from Jackson and Boren. Hohensee now, two of six for 19 yards. Well thrown balls compared to the things we saw earlier that were too short for one man and too long for another. There's Gergash some, looks for a defensive signal. And that's something you don't see normally. Uh, Gergash with a spot of mud on his helmet because we're playing on a natural turf field. So uh, the uniforms will get a little dirty. It'll be back to old time football, Larry. Midfield, second down and five. Short drop back, pass is completed on the sideline to Chester Cooper, the first we have seen of their outstanding. It's a first down. Michigan 40 yard line, Tony. Fullback, tackled by Boren. Just immediately, but that is too late to stop a gain of about seven or eight yards. Guys who is in there not supposed to. And Michigan not bad. Almost immediately against Minnesota's rush, but the downfield. Osmond really has played well, and uh, he has losses. That's not coverage in the flat by Jim Herman. Michigan has had excellent coverage from their linebackers. We've seen three or four occasions when. Geargash and Boren and now Herman are on running backs, running straight stride for stride. I think Herman's presence forced the pass to be thrown that way, and a good big third down play for Michigan defensively. On fourth down, Jim Gallery will try a field goal. 42-yard line, a 52-yarder if he can hit it. Fella hit four against Iowa, and this one won't make it. Out the middle of the end zone where it falls, and I think it was well off to the, to the right also. So no good on the scoring opportunity for Minnesota. And Michigan takes over with excellent field position. Wolverine fans breathe a sigh of relief as a pretty good Minnesota drive just runs out of gas at the 35-yard line. And Michigan goes back on offense. And give credit for that lack of fuel on Minnesota's offense to those linebackers from Michigan who are playing an outstanding game today. Smith to throw on first down. Anthony Carter, an out pattern, it's good. First down. 
Out of bounds at the Minnesota 45 yard line. Rick Wittes chasing Anthony Carter, but that is all. Just chased him out of bounds. Double coverage on Anthony. He's, uh, as Bo says, got a squatted corner. He runs inside, fakes the post, turns it back outside. The key, the pass is delivered very well. Straight out pattern, nice cut by Anthony, squared it off nicely, and Smith delivered it right on the number. 20 yard gain, first and 10. Now at the Gopher 45 yard line. So Michigan's offense quickly strikes back. Three nothing first quarter. Michigan on a 31 yard field goal by Haji Sheik. Again, Anthony Carter. Little turn out on the far side and he's still in bounds and all the way deep into gopher territory before Wittes can knock him out of bounds. Inside the 20 yard line. It's interesting what Joe Salem is trying to do. He's trying to disguise coverages against Anthony looking like they're doubling up on him and then trying to get people back in the middle to stop the run. And when they see that, Smith is reading it nicely when he's single covered. Anthony runs the out, Smith delivers it, and the rest is up to number one. 28 yards on that one as Anthony comes out to this side of the field. And they go with Stanley Edwards. Stanley down to the 10-yard line before he is knocked off his feet. Jim Fonhorst and Rick Wittes are there. Good call once you've had those two fine passes. Butch Wolfolk congratulating Stanley. Well, that's the kind of thing that Anthony Carter can do for you and not even be in the play. He catches two big passes. They get outside. They're a little worried about the, the, the throw to the wide side of the field. So they loosen up. Then you hit him up the middle with Stanley Edwards. Carter out of the game at the moment. Stanley has 30 yards and four carries. And it's second down and two. Smith looking, throws to Stanley Edwards, touchdown. Nobody had him. Rick Wittes was in the neighborhood, but a couple of blocks away. Touchdown for Stanley Edwards. Bo Schembechler is using him a lot today and, and, and getting results. As we said earlier in the show, they wanted to get Stanley Edwards the ball more. The idea here is he's one-on-one -on -one with Wittes, the free safety, because they're expecting Michigan to run. Stanley comes out. Fakes the block on the end, goes to the flat, and there you go. Take Anthony Carter out. They expect him. It's, they expect a run, and instead, Schembechler fools him with a throw. Ali Haji Sheik to convert, and it is good. With just seconds left in the first quarter, it's now Michigan 10, Minnesota nothing. Haji Sheik moves forward to kick off. Manny Henry is deep along with Kerry Glenn. And it is fumbled around by Henry, but now he's got it. And on his feet, knocked down finally about the 15-yard line. Jerry Burgai had him around the ankles. Burgai has been a key special teams and defensive back performer the last few weeks for Michigan. First down and 10, Minnesota at their own 16-yard line. 15 and a half, really. Not good field position and not a good situation as far as the scoreboard is concerned for the Gophers in this first quarter. Jacobs and Henry are in the backfield behind Hohensee. Chester Cooper split out far side. They try Henry. He cuts back and Boren has him around the ankles. Up top. Carlton Rose and Tony Osborne. Manny Henry, short game. Second down and six. It looks, though, as if Minnesota might be successful cutting the play back because Michigan is flowing to the ball so well. Get the ball, cut it back behind the hole where it is actually supposed to develop. Well, whatever they do, they'll be doing it in the second quarter as that's the end of one quarter of play. Michigan leading Minnesota 10 to nothing. The scoring drive for Michigan, 65 yards in four plays. A minute, one second is all for the touchdown pass from Smith to Edwards. And we open the second quarter with Minnesota on its 20-yard line, second down and six. Five and a half, really. Hohenzee to Jacobs. And he makes a good cut, gets the first down. Tackle is made by Gergash, but 
Jacobs eluded one man and got the first down. Missed coverage on the linebackers part. Herman, I believe. Good move by Jacobs coming by Carpenter and then Mike Paul Giergash, number 50. He's got to come over and make the hit. Giergash, of course, has played extremely well all season long. Uh, started all 12 games last year and all seven this year, including this one. First down, 26 yard line of Minnesota. Another short pass to Jacobs again. Another tackle by Gergash right at the 30 yard line. Hohenzi finding those little completions. He is six out of 11. After that 0 for 4 start. Well, they're, 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 they're keeping the deep people covered well. And Michigan's linebackers, although they are throwing some good completions to the backs, are covering them well. Those passes have to be thrown very, very well. And if he gets off his mark a little bit, those linebackers, because they're so close, might make the interception. Second down and six again. Lemerand on the move, and that's why the penalty flag is up. And woo, Jacobs really nailed by Carlton Rose right on the sideline as Jacobs tried to stay in and make something happen. And what happened was a bruise. Yeah, Lemerand jumped off on the other side, negating a good defensive play by Carlton Rose. but. You know, that's the kind of mistake you like. If you're going to make a mistake, make it aggressively. Offside Michigan. Salem watching from the far sideline in the sunshine here in Minneapolis. 63 degrees this afternoon. They were telling me last week they had snow on Saturday here, and fortunately, the Gophers were on the road at Iowa. Also, fortunately, the Gophers won that game, as far as they're concerned, 12-10 over the Hawkeyes. It'll be second down and a yard now as the ball has moved out over the 35 yard line on the penalty. Well, what kind of options do you have in this situation? Bo Schembechler thinks about it. Pretty tough to lose a first down from here unless you can come up with a sack or tackle a ball carrier in the backfield. Bobby Stroop is the fullback now, seeing his first action this afternoon. Stroop it is. Rose and Gergash are hanging on, but it's way too late. First down will be up to the 39-yard line of Minnesota. Apparently, they brought Stroop, the junior from Fargo, North Dakota, in just for that run, although you see 31 getting back in the huddle as he stays in, replacing Manny Henry, who has seen a lot of action. Stroop's a guy that can play both fullback and tailback, so he's one of their more versatile running backs, and with their injury situation, he's a good one to have. First down, they move Jacobs, the tailback, out to flanker. Now they want him to move back. Hohens, he's shifting everybody around, and the clock is ticking. He got it off. Got off the pass also. Chester Cooper makes the catch near the 50-yard line. Tackle made by Brian Carpenter. That is close to a first down, but short. Coming into the game, Cooper had 32 receptions for over 590 yards. Michigan coming with a the blitz. They're in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Cooper turns it up in front of the defensive secondary back because they're worried about the deep pattern. And he gets a nice nine-yard gain out of that one. Minnesota doing to Michigan what Anthony Carter has done to Minnesota. Those little cuts to the sideline. Second down and one. Last time they ran fullback Stroop off the right side. Hohens, he dropped the ball, got up and made it anyway. Diving ahead to the Michigan 49 yard line. Thanks to the block of Ed Olson, his center. Boy, he dropped the exchange from the center, but Olson had cleared everybody out. So had Randy Rasmussen and Bill Humphreys, the guards. So Hohens, he could dive for the first down. Michigan doing a lot of things defensively on that last play. Keith Bostic was ready to blitz, which Makes it two straight blitzes in a row. They've done a lot of that the last two games. They blitzed more than they ever had against Northwestern last week. And here in the early going against Minnesota, they're doing about the same. All those young men up front, they're trying to buy a little time with the trick defense. First down. Jacobs picks his way rather carefully over the 50-yard line. Boren and Body are there to knock him down couple of yards Kane and that's all take a look up front you can see Dallafior from Madison Heights uh, Michigan uh, right out of Bo Sheffeckler's backyard did a number on Tony Osmond Dallafior of course is their captain 
big offensive tackle and a very, very good one. Got only a yard on the play, however. It is second down and nine. All kinds of time, and the reason he couldn't throw, everybody was covered. Keith Bostic doing an excellent job on the far side against Jay Carroll, the tight end. You talk about excellent coverage. Keith Bostic showed you exactly what it was there. He had a man out of the backfield, ran step for step with him, had him on the had his eye on the ball when the quarterback delivered it. He was there to knock it away. Third down and nine. What do you do now? You got a figure throw, and so does Michigan. In come the extra defensive backs. Evan Cooper, Jerry Burgay. Hohenzey puts his backs into an eye formation on this third down. Another blitz, Larry. Roll out, foils the blitz, pass off the hands of Chester Cooper, and they're going to call a pass interference on Brian Carpenter. Carpenter had his hands on Chester Cooper as the ball was coming, and that brought out the flag. Critical Michigan mistakes on big third down and fourth down plays for Minnesota has given Minnesota's offense life. They earlier had a roughing the kicker penalty. Here on a third down and long, Brian Carpenter just sticks a hand on the back of Chester Cooper. Referee was right in making the call. You have to understand that, though, when you're guarding a, a flanker with the talents of Chester Cooper. You just have to do everything you can to stay close to him. Especially when you're running a blitz and you got him all by yourself. Couldn't turn that one up for six. Instead, it's a first down on the penalty with the ball at the Michigan 36-yard line. Hornsey does a lot of changing by turning to his backs. And on first down, he throws sideline. No catch. Almost a great catch by Frank Jacobs. Boy, it looked like he reached over and pulled it in with one arm, but the official was right on top of it and said no, and we can see for ourselves. He had all the time in the world. There's the right arm going out. No, he cradled it against his leg on the ground. Official right there makes a good call. And a really great effort by Frank Jacobs, the junior tailback from Cincinnati, Ohio. Second down and 10. 35-yard line, really, of Michigan. I said 36 a moment ago. Hohen Z to throw. He's got his man, Chester Cooper. Nope, 19 Weckbacker. Brian Carpenter makes the tackle on Weckbacker. And it's first down, Minnesota. Boy, he zipped that one in, didn't he? He has an arm. Weckbacker came to Minnesota after two years in junior college at Glendale in California. And you can see, turns it up just underneath the zone coverage of the deep man and uh, behind the underneath coverage of Bostic. That's their California connection. Cohen Z to Weckbacker from Burbank, California. First down. On the run again. And throwing for six, knocked away by Carpenter, intended for Chester Cooper, and Brian was there, step for step, and batted it away. Brian Carpenter, in his first start after being out for three weeks, is getting himself a workout. He's got Cooper one-on-one, -on -one, and Brian is back there saying, help! Owensy, eight for 16 now, 69 yards. And he almost had that one. If it hadn't been for the deflection by Brian Carpenter, second down and 10. Michigan again sends in their defensive backs expecting a pass on this down. We look at that almost score by the Gophers. Nope, not quite. Back we come to Hohensey as he resets his defensive or his offensive backs. But you just know he's going to go back and throw, and there he is. Strung it out on the rollout, throws back across the field, and a penalty flag goes down. Intended for tight end Jay Carroll. Looks like Evan Cooper will get charged with pass interference. Oh, a costly call and a ball that couldn't have been caught. It really wasn't anywhere near Jay Carroll. And I think the Michigan bench has a legitimate gripe on this one. Bo just threw his headsets up in the air and says, what, you, what can I do? Uh, he was standing there. He saw that the ball was not there. His immediate reaction when Cooper saw the ball thrown in that area was to take a step. 
He took a step and his knee nudged the receiver. No big contact, and he throws the flag. Well, it's first down five yard line. That perhaps the most costly penalty you can get in football, where you get the uh, the play as though it were a completed pass. And it gives the Gophers a scoring opportunity here in the second quarter. They trail 10 to nothing. First down, five yard line. Watch for a fired up Michigan defense. They try Jacobs. Boren has him, but Jacobs has got a couple of yards. Jeff Reeves is also there. At the three yard line, second and goal. Mike Hohensey, one of a batch of junior college quarterbacks who have given almost parity to the Big Ten. Babe Laufenberg at Indiana, another one. Eason at Illinois. On second down, Jacobs tries. No, again, it's Reeves and Boren. Nope, make it Bostic. Not 43, but 1-3. Bostic. Mike Bourne gets tough on the goal line. He leads the team in tackles coming into this game with 82. And uh, on the goal line, Michigan gets tough. They have not a lot of touchdowns, we said, now in 11 quarters. Uh, only field goals, and they got their backs up against it here. Third down from the four-yard line. Gophers haven't scored a touchdown in nine quarters. The fans would like one. The players would like one. Hollinsey going to roll and look. It's open. Hollinsey dives in. He was met by Boren. Reeves was there, but Hollinsey made the dive and carried into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A good play to call on the goal line. You're third and three. You haven't done anything between the tackles, so you let your quarterback run a rollout. You know defensively Michigan's going to be in there tight looking for something in the middle. Run your tight end into the back of the end zone, spread it out, and let Hollins, who's got good running ability, pick and choose. He got hit at about the two, but was able to get into the end zone, and that's all they asked. Jim Gallery to convert. He's got it up and good. And with 9.15 left in the second quarter, it's Michigan 10, Minnesota 7. Here's the play again. You can see Hohensey out there looking to throw, but also knows he's only got three to get. Makes a good move here and just dives over. He's got to break that plane. That's a good idea to get your quarterback out there with some room. Give him the chance to pick the hole. That's his first touchdown, Jim. Hohensey's first touchdown as the Gophers go 84 yards in 14 plays before getting that touchdown run. And let's say, too, that they were aided, too, by a questionable call. Pass interference down close on Evan Cooper. Anthony Carter, Stanley Edwards in the end zone. Or on the goal line, awaiting the kickoff from Jim Gallery. And he's got one high and deep. Get great coverage. Edwards in the back of the end zone says no run back. First to 10 Michigan out of the 20 yard line. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up action later in the quarter. Stroop is back at fullback. Jacobs remains the tailback, and Stroop gets it over the 20 to the 21-yard line, and a penalty flag is thrown into the middle of the pile. Boren was at the bottom, along with Clay Miller, the freshman tackle. What usually happens in a call like that? Holding. And that's what it is against Minnesota. Gophers will get some very poor field position now. Point of that foul is just over the 20 yard line. And the officials trying to determine just where and how far. And a good chance for Michigan really to reestablish that field position edge that they had, giving their offense 40, 50 yards to go rather than the 80 that they've had in their last two possessions. 11 yard line, first down and 15. Michigan got by a situation where they had 15 to go for a first down. See what the Gophers can do. Oh, 
trying a little draw, and Stroop gets away with it. Manny Stroop gets to the sideline, and finally, out of bounds, 30-yard line, or thereabouts. First down, it would be. Henry, Manny Henry, had right first name, wrong last name. Good draw play in this situation. Michigan coming, thinking they're throwing, and then it's up to Henry. Henry has the best average per carry on the team this year, 5.4 after only carrying it 40 times this season, but you can see why he's got that good average. Great speed to the outside and a good move to cut it outside to the sideline. 22 yards gained, he got it all. First down, Minnesota. Now Hohensee's got some room to run and throw, and that's what he's trying to do. Got his man, Jay Carroll. Super catch in Michigan territory. I thought Owensy missed his man, but Jay Carroll, the tight end, made a diving reception, and it's right at midfield, first down Gophers. The reason the reception was such a nice one was because he was running one way when the ball was delivered. He had to stop, lean back across his body, and make the catch. Chester Cooper is split out near side of the field on this first down from the 50. Owensy's looking away from Cooper. And Bostic makes the interception. Keith Bostic got the rebound, leaping high in the air. At the 25-yard line, it's Michigan's ball. Bostic with Brian Carpenter back in the game is moving back to his safety position, which is where he normally plays. He had been playing the corner, and now he's at the safety spot, which he's more comfortable with. He's playing center field. He sees the receiver going deep. He's just coming over, waiting for the ball, reacts to it when it's delivered and makes the nice interception. Big break for Michigan as their defense holds, gives the ball back to their offense with about six minutes left. 25 yard line, first down. Stanley Edwards breaking outside, trying to go back against the grain and there's great pursuit by the Gophers. They're all there and the penalty flag is thrown against Anthony Carter. And Cardelli did a little extra hitting after the play, and the official went walking after Anthony. AC must have said something. But as you could see, the Michigan players got him back in the huddle pretty quick, and it'll just be penalty against Michigan wiping out the game by Stanley Edwards. Bo is not very happy with that at all, and I think one of the reasons is, is that Anthony was only retaliating from the late hit or the punch or the elbow thrown by Cardelli. And it's always the guy that re retaliates that gets caught, and that's exactly what happened in that instance, but puts Michigan in a deep hole. Back inside the 15-yard line. Call it the 14, and it'll be second down. And 22. The other thing that might do is Anthony might just say, hey, you can't do that to me and get a little more excited about playing this game. And that could give Glenn Carstetley a lot of headaches today. Six penalties against the Wolverines for 66 yards here in the first half alone. And second down and very long. Gophers will have their backs playing deep, expecting the ball to be thrown by Steve Smith. Option play instead. Not much there. But a little talking going on between both teams now. Knocking around, Jim Fonhorst and a bunch of others were there to stop Steve Smith near the 20 yard line. Third and 18 from the 18. Wolfolk out, Lawrence Ricks in. This one heating up a little bit. A sun-baked crowd just sitting rather quietly watching the Gophers as Michigan leads 10-7 in the second quarter. Third and 18. Time to throw over the middle. Got his man. Wittes wraps him up in a hurry. But it's Vincent Bean who makes the reception. 
Notice how Smith looks to Anthony. He looks to Anthony and then comes right down the middle to a wide open Vincent Bean. Wittes is right there, but Wittes had to come from his right. You knew he was thinking, where's Carter? And he was over there looking for Anthony. And Vincent Bean snuck underneath him in the deep zone, made the good reception for the first down. First and 10, 36 yard line. Wolfo dancing, no running room at all. Kevin Kellen wasn't blocked and he was waiting for Butch. Just under four minutes left in this half. Again, some conversation between the players. Between the both teams. Second down and 14. As they lost four, thanks to Kevin Kellen's tackle, they run the option this way, and Steve Smith's speed breaks it. Over the 50, nice cutback. Steve Smith lost the football, however, but it went out of bounds. Michigan's ball, first down. Well, that time Steve Smith read what the option quarterback is supposed to read. I'm sure that Bo would have liked to have seen him hold on to the football. Luckily, he was by the end zone. But you'll see the defensive back go right to Woolfolk. When Smith saw that, turned upfield, and there's where his great speed comes into play. As we've said sometimes before, Smith is actually faster than Anthony Carter for the first 20 yards. The ball knocked out of his hands, luckily, right by the sideline. 35-yard line of Minnesota, first down Michigan. Plenty of time in the half for Michigan to add to their point total of 10. Quick pass. Anthony Carter, one on one, breaks outside and gets seven or eight yards, and a penalty flag is thrown as he's hit a little bit late on that side. Wittes chased him out of bounds. The extra hit came from Sislevich, the linebacker. Real good idea. Get Anthony the ball on a quick hitch. He's got five, six yards to work. You give him that kind of room, he's going to get by a defensive back. There's the hit out of bounds, the flag thrown, and again, a little chippy out there. But a good play by Michigan, giving Anthony the ball in a quick hitch pattern, letting him get some room and run. He doesn't need blockers. <laughs> like, like basketball, clear out that side of the field and let Anthony go one-on-one -on -one with a defensive back. It pays off in a first down. It was going to be close to a first down without the penalty. But now it is, and inside the 15, the 14 yard line of Minnesota. First down, Michigan. Craig Dunaway in at tight end. Vince Bean comes out. Again, in a situation like this, they've been down on the goal line. You run both wide receivers out and try to sneak that tight end underneath. See if they go to Dunaway, because he usually is their pass catcher when they want to get down on the goal line. Officials made an adjustment. It's inside the 13 yard line. Call it the 12. First down. I think they might just run it in from here. Option play, Butch Wolfolk. Nice cutback. And Wolfolk lands at the five yard line. Sislevich makes a hit that stops Butch, but Butch gets extra yardage just flying through the air. The man in motion was Dunaway, and Dunaway missed the block. And Butch, on his own, gets by. The cutback, the defensive man overruns the ball. Dunaway missed him, and then it's all up to Wolfolk, and he just does a great job cutting it back, getting something out of nothing. At the four-yard line, second down and two for a first down. Run it in from here, again, man in motion. Stanley Edwards is close to the first down, near the two-yard line, as they unpile. Two minutes, 14 seconds left in the half. Official says, let's measure. I think it's too close to call. How's that for backing out? <laughs> it's gonna make a call on it. Do a little tap dance well, for us. Yeah, so, I'm doing a little dancing around this one. We'll know in a moment. But still, it can't be a bad situation for Michigan. Third down and less than a yard. As they stretch out the chain, it is that close. You know, actually closer than that. He's got his hands further apart. 
Kurt Becker is trying to signal the bench how far it is. But it isn't very far. And they've got two cracks to get the first down. And that would give them a total of six shots at a touchdown from the two and a half. Not bad situation. Not a bad one for Michigan with that big offensive line. And you know that if they're loaded up inside to stop Stanley Edwards, they'll just run the option and either let Smith keep it or pitch it to Wolfolk. And with two yards and an angle, he can get it. And they are loaded up inside. The Gophers bringing in as many big linemen as they can and jamming everybody but one right on the line of scrimmage. And Smith goes option. And he gets the first down because that's inside the two-yard line. Mike Pepe there to make the tackle. They're calling timeout because they want to bring the chain across to measure or at least get people out of the way. But there is no question on that one. and goal for Michigan as Smith gets it just inside the two yard line. Edwards and Wolfolk guess which one or is it Smith again on the option. No he's going to throw. Got it. Touchdown to Stanley Edwards. The second touchdown pass to Stanley. And the same play they run for their first touchdown. Fake the double back fake into the line of scrimmage. Fake Stanley blocking on the end. He holds it for a count. Runs out into the flat. Watch 32. Fakes a block. Just runs right through into the flat. There's nobody there to cover with Minnesota so concerned about the run. Stanley Edwards second touchdown of the day. But you wouldn't expect him to get two of them passing. First man there was Dunaway as a matter of fact to congratulate Stanley Edwards. And Ali Haji Sheik will attempt a conversion. It's up and good with a minute 17 seconds left in the half. It's Michigan 17, Minnesota 7. Manny Henry and Kerry Glenn are at the goal line to receive the kickoff from Sheik. And it is right to Manny Henry, three yard line. And at the 15 yard line, he is met and wrestled down. First down, Minnesota. Jim Herman, 94, first man down, although there were plenty of other Michigan players down there on very good kick coverage. That is great special teams coverage that Michigan has had all day. The kicks that have been returned have not been returned to the 20-yard line, and Haji Sheik has put two of them deep in the end zone they couldn't return, and you just can't ask for much more from your special teams. 16 yard line first down for the Gophers long way to go and not much time to do it. They try a draw and Lemoran chases Henry. So he finally gets a little help from Clay Miller to make the tackle. Second and five. Michigan scoring drive covering 74 yards in 10 plays. The two yard pass to Edwards. What did it? Second down and six. We'll call it only a four yard gain in the last play as Hohenzi, under a little pressure, gets one away, overthrown. Intended for Manny Henry. They throw to their backs a lot, but they throw to their backs deep sometimes. Jacobs and Henry have both gotten deep on the Michigan secondary. Henry is isolated one on one with Jim Herman, and Herman just cannot run with a guy that is, you know, that quick. Had Hohenzi just barely gets the pass off under a big rush from Lemerand. That was Bill Humphreys out of Detroit Chansey who got back to make the block on Lemerand and save his quarterback as the Gophers have a right side of the line that is all Michigan. Humphreys and Dallafiore, the right guard and right tackle. 
third down and six. The ball just short of the 20 yard line. Hoensy has time and finds Jacobs. First down, tackle made by Marion Body. But again, that's that pass to the back, short out of the backfield. It's good for a first down with 35 seconds left in the half. Mike Hoensey, 10 for 20, 94 yards, one pass intercepted. And he's trying to move the Gophers in for a score now, but the odds are against him. First down at the Minnesota 28-yard line. You know he's going to throw, and he's got the time. Jacobs open until Gergash brings him down. A little help from Jim Herman, the second man in on that tackle. Looks like no huddle for the Gophers this time. Michigan as the clock is under 20 seconds. Michigan secondary is back about 40 yards off the ball. Deep safety, Tony Jackson. They're not letting anybody get deep. Second down and four, and Manny Henry gets the first down easily as Michigan would give them that short run. Marion Body makes the tackle on the fullback, Henry. And timeout is called by the Gophers. Seven seconds left in the half. First down on the Minnesota 35. Two more plays if they hurry. 45-yard line of Minnesota. First down, but that's not the problem. The clock is the problem. And if he takes too much time getting this pass away, it'll be the last play of the half. Incomplete intended for Chester Cooper. And that gets some time for one more. A second left as the uh, Gopher coaches call this last play of the half. On well, this situation, you got to figure, let's go deep, go for it all, because if you throw it to the 20-yard line, clock's over, you can't call timeout, first half's over. Just but throw the, it deep. But the odds would be against any kind of a long completion. But the only thing you're open for is you might be able to get a interference call, and they can't end the half on a defensive penalty, and then maybe they'd kick it. That's how long a shot it is. Second down, 45-yard line, one second left in the half. And there's Hohensee. Got to give him time. And he lets one go way back in the end zone intercepted. Tony Jackson, you can still run. 100 yards for Jackson. He tries a cutback and slides in safely at about the 27-yard line. Didn't know for a minute whether to run or not, and neither did the Gophers, whether to tackle him or not. I don't know what Bo's upset about, but he looks a little upset at somebody, maybe the head linesman or the official. Uh, he's got a few words to say about, with him. Uh, but Joe Salem's going off with no worries, and that pass interception was really one for Tony Jackson's statistics, and that's all. Halftime, it's Michigan 17, Minnesota 7. The halftime statistics a little closer than you might imagine. Looked like Michigan had dominance, but the total yardage... 213 to 167, not that far away, just that Minnesota did not cash in that one great drive they had. They had one big 84-yard drive, which they did cash in on, on the really helped by the pass interference call on Michigan. Joe Salem looking over right now at a 17-7 deficit for his guys. I think the key was is the fact that Michigan was penalized 78 yards for, and seven penalties, and that usually doesn't happen to the Wolverines and it really kept them from getting more points on the board. Stanley Edwards and Anthony Carter need to receive Jim Gallery's second half kickoff, but you can't receive that one right out the back of the end zone. First and 10, Michigan at the 20-yard line. Larry Adderley and Jim Branstead are here in Minneapolis for Michigan football. A 10-point lead for the Wolverines as they are bouncing right back into contention in the Big Ten race. Big Ten champion could end up with two losses, most likely will. 1959, the last time a Big Ten champion had two losses when Wisconsin won the title. First down, Michigan. Steve Smith, Stanley Edwards, and Butch Wolfolk in the eye from the 20-yard line. Wolfolk it is. And there's nothing there. Fonhorst. 
and Kellen knocking Wolfolk down. No gain, second and ten. Well, he actually moved the ball from one side of the 20 to the other, but that's about it. Steve Smith ducking into the shadow of the press box here at Memorial Stadium. On second and ten, they run option. And Smith just gets maybe a yard or two. Whole lot of help there for Glenn Howard, the middle linebacker. I think he had an opportunity to turn it up sooner, and he did not. Well, Minnesota flowing with the ball so well. They were hurt on the option play by Smith and Wolfolk in the first half, adjusting at halftime, making sure that they get those people out there, string out the play wide, which in a sense would make you think Michigan will try to come back inside with Stanley Edwards and some quick hitters, quick openers with the trap blocking up front. Hard to go inside now on third down and eight. Michigan 22. Lobs a pass over the head of Stanley Edwards, but a penalty flag is thrown as Fonhorst gets an interference call and deservedly so. He banged into the back of Edwards, diving for the ball, but going through the player makes it a little difficult. Absolutely, if, if Evan Cooper's interference call in the first half was justified, certainly this was. You can see over the top of Stanley Edwards, Stanley never really had the chance to make the catch. Don't know that he could have made it anyway. It would have been a tough one-hander, but the result will be, well, what will the result be? First down. Michigan, 25-yard line. Anthony Carter splits out to the far side of the field. He is in the sunshine. Dunaway in motion. And there goes the option. Edwards fighting his way through, dropped the football. And they're scrambling for it, and no one knows yet, although... Cardelli is signaling Gophers football. The officials say, wait a minute, let's figure this out. I don't think anyone saw that fumble for a minute until one of the Michigan players went back into the pile up to try to get it. And they did. Anthony Carter is coming out with the football saying, I found it. A little Easter egg hunt there at the 30 yard line where it'll be second down and five for Michigan. Better than that. Excuse me, it's up over 32-yard line, second down and three. A break as Stanley Edwards dropped the football, but Michigan found it on the bottom of the pile. Anthony Carter. Second down and short, puts Wolfolk behind a block from Anthony Carter. Gets outside and knocks over the coach's bench, telephones and such, which is all right. And so is Michigan with a first down up around the 45-yard line. First and 10 at the 45. Great speed by Butch to get outside. Anthony's block, he really misses Cardelli, but Butch is able to break it outside enough for the first down, and that's just world-class speed that he has that, that is, enables him to break it outside. Got away in motion, Stanley Edwards cuts back. Hanging on to the ball this time, just short of the 50-yard line. A gain of four, second down and six. Good-looking drive by Michigan that was in trouble until the pass interference call against Fonhorst. Now Michigan moving smartly. It's been their own mistakes and penalties that have kept them off the score a couple of times. Otherwise, they might have a more comfortable lead. Second down, little misdirection. Wolfo breaks a couple of tackles on his own and gets it the first down. He's out of bounds near the 40. Gets up in a hurry, and Rick Wittes was right with him. A little chippy. Penalty flag is down, 
And it looks like they're going to call it against Moransky. He is reacting as though, oh, no, I can't believe it. 72 on the block, right in front. He runs him down. He runs him down. And Butch makes the good cut outside. It didn't look like Moransky did any holding. He might have knocked Let him in the back, in his back. But in a situation like that, Larry, the referee's got to use judgment because the man turned around himself. The defensive man turned around. And Moransky had him blocked, and then he turned around and fell down, and he did a pretty good, uh, took, took a pretty good dive, too. Yeah, that, that was the answer on that one. Holding penalty, they're calling. I really expected that to be the clip call. Instead, they make it holding, and it is second down and 12 for Michigan. The ball pushed back to the 44, 43-yard line. It's a tough call to make because I think really Moransky was doing his job and did it properly. Dunaway in motion, a little too soon. He sets up on the other side. That shifts the Minnesota defense. Smith to throw, looking deep for Vince Bean. He got him, and it's a catch. 21-yard line, first down. Good throw and a fine catch by Vince Bean. Gives Michigan a first down at the Minnesota 21-yard line. Outstanding catch on the sideline. Minnesota questioning whether he was in bounds. Only need one foot in college, and there it is. He had the right foot in bounds. Outstanding catch. Good for the completion first down, Michigan. Actually, he had one foot in twice. <laughs> yes. Touched once and fell on the knee. 36-yard gain on the play. Michigan again knocking on the door as we start this second half. A 17-7 game. Michigan on top. Pitch back to Wolfolk. Outside, Wittes got there. Stopped him uh, for a gain of just a yard, grabbing the jersey, and Butch slips out about the 19 or 20. They will mark it at the 19. I think they got the generous mark that time. Took a little bit too long to develop. Stanley Edwards was able to turn the corner as a blocker and actually knocked down a cornerback, but Butch was just a little bit slow getting around the corner. Had he made it, he'd have been gone. Second down and seven. Option, but very little option. Stanley Edwards straight ahead for a couple. He'll be at the 15-yard line, just inside the 16. On the last play, I think Stanley should have stayed home. He turned it upfield a little quick had he waited and picked off Wittes, number four, as he came through. That would have given Butch the room to run, and Butch could outrun the linebacker, Sislevich. The only problem with that is is that, uh, as we see, one of the Minnesota faithful going through the ground. The only problem with that is with a guy with Butch's speed, you like to get around the corner because you figure with his speed, he'll turn it without blocking those guys. Third down and four. A Halloween crowd quiet as Vince Bean does not get that back to the 10-yard line. Smith figuring blitz, tried to throw it quickly and threw it too low. Well, every now and then we see a little bit of an experience from Steve Smith, and I think that was a situation where he saw the blitz coming, turned and fired too quickly. He had a little more time, could have set up, fired the ball in for Vincent Bean, and Vincent was well open enough for the first down. Ali Haji Sheik, 23-yard line, 33-yard field goal, and he drives it right through. It's good. Ten minutes and 17 seconds left to play third quarter. It's Michigan 20, Minnesota 7. Kerry Glenn and Teddy Watson deep to receive Sheik's kickoff. And it'll be at the goal line for Teddy Watson. 10-12, Bostic hits him. Jim Herman has him held up short of the 15-yard line. And that's where it'll be, first and 10, Minnesota. And once again, you can't emphasize enough how important it is that those special teams keep Minnesota after the kickoff inside the 20. If Minnesota leaves it in the end zone, they get four more yards and they get when they return it. That's just excellent special teams coverage. It gives the defense a leg up starting the series. They get six more yards, matter of fact, as the ball is spotted at the 14-yard line. First down, Minnesota. 
thinking they can run them back, they are making bad decisions. Starting the Gophers off deep. Hohenzee, oh, has he got time. But Jacobs, the only man open in the flat, and Gergash is there to make him work a little bit, although Jacobs gets 10 on his own. What a nifty run by Frank Jacobs, the junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Gergash him covered well. He met him with about one yard gained is all as Hohenzee went to the checkoff pattern back flaring out of the backfield. But then it's all on Jacobs here as Gergash overruns the ball. Boren overruns it. And give credit to Jacobs for good ability at running. That's good open field running. Second down and a yard. He got nine. A little short, but they're out now to the 24. Feeling better about the situation, and fullback Manny Henry makes it a first down over the 30. Tony Jackson and Mike Boren combine on the tackle. First down. Michigan's scoring drive went 80 yards in 10 plays. 33-yard field goal by Sheik. His second field goal of the afternoon. Minnesota now first and 10 at their own 31 yard line. The blitz gets through on Hohenzee and he eludes it and he's off and running. Look out, Mike Hohenzee still going and Tony Jackson brings him down. What a scramble as Hohenzee avoided being sacked for a loss and turned it into a first down and a long gainer. Hohenzee was an All-American junior college quarterback last year from Mount St. Antonio, and he was their league's most valuable player, but he hadn't been known as a runner. Michigan misses a couple tackles in the backfield. There's a great cut to get by Carlton Rose and an outstanding open field tackle by Tony Jackson to keep Hohenzee from getting more. 26 yards gained on the play. First down, Minnesota. That brings a little noise out of this crowd. Frank Jacobs dives into a pile, and so does a penalty flag near the 40-yard line. Beautiful afternoon, 63 degrees at kickoff, and there are 52,875 in attendance. You wouldn't know it. They've been quiet most of this Saturday afternoon. Holding is the call. That will stall this Minnesota drive. Kind of expected a big crowd, but a noisy crowd as the Gophers got into the race with an upset of Iowa a week ago. In most cases, too, when Michigan's on the road, at least every game they've been on the road this year, the crowd has really been involved in the game. And I can't remember whenever a crowd's been in the game more than that opener at Wisconsin, when they literally were on their feet at every down. And Wisconsin, of course, pulled the upset. Back to being first down and back now to 12 yards. First and 12 for a first down. Ball right on the 45-yard line of Michigan. Owen Z throws the little pass. No good. Intended for Jacobs. All Jacobs got out of that was a shoulder and an elbow from Keith Bostic. Jacobs got the ball a little too early as Michigan came with both inside linebackers, Geargash and Boren, and they were forcing Hohensee, and Hohensee threw it a little too early, and Jacobs wasn't ready. He's got time to throw, too, uh, Jim. That's the key, I suppose. Clay Miller, Al Sinsich, the freshman in that Michigan defensive line, learning today but not getting through to the quarterback. And Michigan now going to the nickel on defense. Second down and 12. You can guess when the Gophers will pass most of the time. That's And you're right. But look at the time he gets. And now he's going to run again. Hohenzee's got another first down. Almost the 20-yard line before he runs into Evan Cooper. 22-yard line. Hohenzee's first down. He is 12 of 25 passing. But he's doing much better lately as a runner. I tell you, you can't get much better downfield defensive secondary coverage than Michigan had that time. They had a four-man pattern, including a flare pattern, and it looked like the purple jerseys, or the maroon jerseys, had magnets with white jerseys on them. Tonesy turned it up and got good yardage. 24 yards on that one gives him 58 yards overall running this afternoon. He better stay running. Frank Jacobs, the tailback, gets inside the 20 before he's knocked down. 
Running behind that Michigan side of the offensive line, Bill Humphreys from Detroit's Chatsey and Ken Dallafiore from Madison Heights. Well, the quarterback scramble has really hurt Michigan this year. Last week against Northwestern, Kevin Villers was very successful at the scramble. And the Navy's quarterback did a good job of scrambling against the Michigan defense. Second down and six. Seventeen yard line of Michigan. The Gophers knocking on the door. Manny Henry short yardage on his back. Tony Osborne. And underneath hanging onto his legs. Mike Warren. The shadow from the press box now almost all the way across the field. At least in the Michigan end. Joe Salem and the Gophers look on. Number one is quarterback backup Andy Hare. And of course the other backup is Tim Salem, the coach's son, number 10. Third down and about four yards to go for first down. Hohenzee throws for Jacobs. Gergash tackles him immediately. And I think that's short of the first down. the crowd getting into it now saying to the Gophers let's go for it great coverage by Geargash back out of the backfield he was on him all the way step for step and the Gophers decide they'll talk it over take a timeout got to have some points out of this drive and they're short of the first down. Jim Gallery will attempt a field goal from just over the 20 yard line. 30 31 yards if good and I think he missed it off to the right. It is no good. Gallery's field goal attempt misses and the Gophers turn the ball over without some points and that brings down a few boos from the crowd. Michigan back on offense and a time consuming drive just what Bo Schembechler would like. 5.52 left to play third quarter. And Larry it's something Michigan hasn't been able to do this year. When they have the chance to put a team away they haven't been able to put together that long steady drive that works the clock and get some points at the same time. Another opportunity for them here from the 20 yard line first and 10. <laughs> Vince Bean split out to this side. Anthony Carter in the spotlight. The sunshine on the far side of the field. Which Wolfolk straight ahead. Very little running room as they closed on him quickly. Bonhorst. And Glenn Howard. Stopping Butch after a four yard gain. Second down and six. Von Horst and Howard are the real backbones of this defense. They lead the team in tackles one two last year. Von Horst led the team in assists which means he does get to the football. On second down the Wolverines need six. They go to Wolfolk again. He tries to get outside and there's Howard. Glenn Howard met him right about the 25 yard line and that's where the gain ended. They get the 27. Butch winning the struggle. Stanley Edwards getting up and helping up the man he knocked down, Anthony Davis. yardage than you would normally want. Third and three. Dunaway in motion. They come with the option. Steve Smith breaks almost into the clear. Gets it to the 30 yard line and that'll be very close to a first down. All depends on the mark now. It got crowded and Smith got bumped around and it is first down Michigan. That is just an amazing play because Smith look at now watch he cuts it way back behind. There's only one guy to Smith's left. The entire defense had flowed to the football to the strong side of where they were headed. Now you'd think with that kind of flow, some kind of counteraction would really be good. 
First down, they run a little misdirection. Butch Wolfolk gets a good block and bumps Glenn Cardelli head up before going out of bounds short of the 40. There's the counter action. Becker 65, good block. Moransky leading another good block. Springs Butch around the corner, gets about five. 35 yard line, second down and five. That kind of play will stop that heavy flow to the football. 14 carries, 47 yards for Butch Wolfolk. He is finding the going a little tough today. Usually by 14 carries, Butch has 100 yards or more. Stanley Edwards runs hard, but right into the arms of Anthony Davis. Another Detroiter, Anthony Davis from Chatsey High School. There's a couple, Tony Horton, a backup linebacker, is also from Chatsey. Minnesota doing some pretty good recruiting over there, apparently. And don't forget, right out of Detroit, Chatsey High School, Marion Barber, one of their all-time leading ground gainers, graduated last year. That helps you, I guess. You get a, a star player like that, you go back to a high school, and you can talk to the young men. Third down and two. Steve Smith, confident, wants to throw for it, and he got Vince Bean, 45-yard line, great catch. Bean kept one foot in bounds and fell out of bounds as he made the reception. Vincent Bean out of Southfield High School hasn't seen the ball come his way too much this season, but the Michigan people are looking for him to make catches like this more often. He is that kind of a receiver. He can make the big play. He's kind of in the shadow of Anthony Carter, but he's capable of it. That kind of a catch called out of bounds in the Michigan-Iowa game, but that's history. First down, 45-yard line of Minnesota. Stanley Edwards really belted to the ground says there's a loose football. The officials have not yet agreed. But the tremendous hit made by Glenn Howard, 6'2", 225, but he really unloaded on Edwards. Howard's a heck of an athlete. Won 12 letters in high school. Was named to all city and all county football team and baseball team for three straight years. And can he play football? Second down and 10. Stanley's bell probably still ringing off that hit. But he's in there, and Smith goes back to throw. Misses Vince Bean, and it bounces off the arm of Glenn Cardelli, who really was the only man with a chance to catch that ball. Bean had turned outside to the sideline, and the ball was thrown back inside. Wrong way. Mix up in the pattern as, as Vincent cuts it out on a deep out cut, and he's open. Uh, but Smith throws it over his head, and Vincent reacts upfield. Cardelli there to knock it down. Smith throws the ball on target. It's another long completion for Vincent Bean. 64, Jerry DiOrio carries in the play from the bench on third down and 10. 45-yard line of Minnesota. Time to throw, and an open man. He dropped the ball. Vince Bean was open, just couldn't hang on over the middle. Steve Smith also knocked to the ground after he let go of that one. Fourth down and 10. Michigan does not come up with the long drive that runs the clock and scores points again. They move it pretty well to the Minnesota 45, but that's all. You see what they're doing, Anthony Carter. They're doubling up. There was another man deep, although he was well covered by the underneath coverage. Bracken to kick. Cardelli is deep, and it's a short kick, and Cardelli feels it and dives over the 20. A risk, but he got an extra three yards as Bracken tried to drop that one back and not hit the end zone with it. In an effort to hold back, he wound up with only a 27-yard punt. Well, that's hurt, uh, it hurts his average, but it's, it's a smart thing to try to do. Averaging 45 coming into the game today, Try to get the coffin corner, tries to get it down inside the 10, and that eliminates a lot of the things that offensively Minnesota can do. First down Gophers just over their own 21-yard line. Stroop is now the fullback. Jacob's the tailback. We were worried about him, but he's played the whole game and runs hard for a couple of yards there. 
Hammerstein and Rose make the tackle on him. Really hard to see what the injury was to Frank Jacobs. And he has been a good running back for the Gophers, but they are more excited about freshman Tony Hunter, who is out of this one altogether. 33, if you can find him on the sideline. Tony Hunter has been a breakaway kind of runner, but injured already three times this year, and he's out right now. Walter Ross is the tailback, 41, replacing Jacobs. Poensy's throw over the middle to Carroll is complete. Brought down right away by Bostic, but Jay Carroll, their tight end at 6-4, snatched that one out of the air, and they get the game. Another Minnesota athlete who's very, very good one uh, out of Winona. He's another 10-letter winner in high school, and he won letters in golf. Imagine a 6'4", 219-pound kid getting up on the tee and knocking it down the middle about 300 yards. Well, today's the day to play here in Minnesota, that's for sure. Third down and less than a yard. the 30 and you got your first down but whistles blow as they try Stroop penalty flags at both sides of the line of scrimmage Gophers are excited indicating the call would go against Michigan illegal procedure on Michigan gets you a first down Richard McFay, today's umpire, referee, making that signal. B.J. Dickey could be coming in to see some action here in the fourth quarter. We're into the final minute of the third quarter. Steve Smith has done all right today, but a chance to give, uh, although Smith is at the other end of those passes, so maybe Dickey is just providing Smith with a catcher. First down for Hohensi. Runs out again. He's found this to be successful. Out of bounds, 45 yard line. Close to a first down. Gergash chasing Hohen Z out of bounds. on that scramble right at the 45 yard line getting out of bounds stops the clock too. Hohenzi doing just what he wanted to do and now first down he goes over the middle and under great coverage the reception is made Ross the tailback what a fine catch Keith Bostic was all over him and Tony Jackson was right alongside of him but Hohenzi jammed that one in there Ross is another junior college transfer coming to Minnesota from Anoka Junior College in Minnesota. And one of his claims to flame, fame, Ross's, is that he gained 404 yards in a game. So you know that he's more than just a pass receiver. Mike Hohenzee, 15 out of 28 for 124 yards. And he ran for the only touchdown that Minnesota has scored. Fullback Stroop, good fake, and Stroop gets a first down near the 30. Great play call there as Michigan was back on its heels expecting pass and Owens he faked the pitch and went with a fullback. Both linebackers overrun the ball. Big hole opens up and then Stroop shows it how good a runner he is. And he gets downfield, heads north and south as quickly as he can, rather east and west in this stadium, but downfield toward the goal line. And that's the end of three quarters of play with a score, Michigan 20, Minnesota 7. 15 minutes to play and a couple of touchdowns could win it for the Gophers. That would give them 21 should they make both conversions. And Michigan has only 20. Game is not yet put away. And Hohenzee has him on the move. Out to Ross. Stumble as he made the catch. Dives over the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Second down and five, five and a half. You know, as we watch this, Minnesota's Golden Gophers remind me an awful lot of a, another team up here in Minnesota, the Vikings. They throw the little short pass, nothing over 30, 20, 15 yards, and it's a control-type offense with the short pass and effective. 
and they stay in the game and they are in this one in the final quarter. Trying to run the middle and Sinsich makes the first hit in the tackle on fullback Bobby Stroop. Short yardage again, but not bad. It'll be third down, 26 yard line. Third down and three and a half. Call it four. Hohenzee's got a tough call here. Some of the Michigan fans on hand begin to call for defense to stop Minnesota on this drive. Fullback stroke gets stopped. Whistles blowing everywhere. Help coming from Lemoran, but Tony Osmond stood him up and pushed him back. Well, they went to the draw play once too often as Stroop, who came here to Minnesota as a defensive back, this time gets stopped at the line of scrimmage and now forces a big decision from Joe Salem and the Golden Gophers on fourth down and three. Got to go for it. Got to throw for it, go for it somehow. But you tried it. to draw twice. Matter of fact, fourth down and three. Crowd loves the decision. Critical play. The Gophers almost have to score on this possession to keep their hopes alive. Owens, he rushed by Osmond, throws wildly out of anybody's reach, and that's the end of that Minnesota drive. Michigan will take over. Boy, in a situation like that, you wonder why Minnesota's so successful running the back out of the backfield, getting three and four. Why don't they get Walter Ross or Stroop and just dump it off to him, give him a couple yards, see if he can get it on his own. Instead, they try to go deep to the end zone. Michigan's first ball, first down, 25-yard line. Couple of good drives, but the Gophers have wound up with nothing. And that's really been the answer. Same backfield that has played almost every down for Michigan. Steve Smith, Stanley Edwards, and Butch Wolfolk gets an opening. Look out, Wolfolk makes a couple of good cuts and Butch is on the sideline into Minnesota territory. They say he stepped out at the 44 yard line, but it's an easy first down and a 31 yard dash by Butch Wolfolk. That'll get his average up, uh, not to what he's been accustomed to, but the hole opens up at the point of attack and once you get Butch Wolfolk into the secondary, it's almost like catching lightning. 88 yards and 15 carries for Butch. Going after another 100-yard game. That changes field position in a hurry. At the 44 of Minnesota. Quick pass to Anthony Carter, one-on-one -on -one with Cardelli. And Carter's thrown out of bounds, but about the 36-yard line. Can make that play work all day if they're going to give Anthony that much room off the ball. Absolutely. Anthony has already passed Jim Smith into second place on Michigan's all-time career receiving yardage. He had uh, 91 in the first half on five catches. And there he gets nine yards, so he's got 100 yards on six catches, and he's into second place. Second down and a yard. Great circumstance, and this little drive has certainly quieted the Gopher fans as Stanley Edwards fights ahead for a first down. Knocked down by Glenn Howard, and hanging on to his ankles, Jimmy James, number 91. But it's too late. It's first down, 32-yard line. Michigan on the move. About 12 and a half minutes to play as Dunaway brings the play in from the sideline. Wolfolk cuts back, cuts inside, runs right into the arms of 38 Brent Harms. Thirty yard line. Second down and eight. Again, Michigan looking for a time consuming drive that'll put up the points to put this one away. 
Slugging it out on a beautiful afternoon in Minneapolis. Michigan pretty much in command of this one. Facing difficult games all the rest of this year. Tom Hassel replaces Edwards at fullback. An equipment problem for Edwards. And Butch Wolfolk tries to get outside. Gets a second chance and bangs down to the 25-yard line. Rick Wittes right there with Butch. Well, he made something out of that when there was trouble early on in the run. Uh, what, what he did was made something out of nothing because there was no way he was going to get out of that. He just used his running ability to break it outside and get five yards. And there were not five yards there. Third down and three. Got the jackets off on the Michigan sideline, and that's the shady side. Minnesota takes the sun. On the far side, on third down, Steve Smith for the corner, and Anthony Carter, he got it. Touchdown. Anthony Carter makes a great catch just before he went out of bounds. I don't believe it. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, that's number 26 in his career, another Michigan record for Anthony. Uh, he never ceases to amaze you. Looked like that one was maybe overthrown and out of bounds, and he makes the catch in the in the corner of the end zone. And even Anthony's shaking his head. He <laughs> says, how did I do that? 26 to 7 and counting Haji Sheik to attempt the conversion. And with 10 minutes and 36 seconds left to play in the game, it's Michigan 27, Minnesota 7. The touchdown pass from Smith to Carter. Anthony running a deep flag to the corner, double covered. Minnesota says he didn't hold on. Anthony's in bounds, and the ball drops out when he hits the ground. But he had possession. That's a touchdown. And Unbelievable. Anthony Carter just does it. Every time he does it, you can't believe it, yet he does it again about 10 minutes later. Not a time-consuming drive. Only 2 minutes and 11 seconds to go 75 yards in six plays. The 25-yard pass to Carter, the finisher. It does one thing, gets more points on the board, but does not take a whole lot off your clock. I think Bo will go along with that. He doesn't mind. I think he'll take the seven. I think you're right. Teddy Watson is deep, along with Kerry Glenn, to receive Haji Sheik's kickoff. And another beauty sails into the end zone. Glenn says no, won't run it out. First and 10, Minnesota at their 20-yard line. Gophers face the difficult task now. They have moved the ball pretty well, but Michigan will be expecting pass, and that's about all they have left to try to cram some points into the final 10 minutes of the game. Hohensey has Ross and Stroop in the backfield behind him now. And he wants Ross to drop back a step. There has been some confusion in the Minnesota offense this afternoon. Whoa, Hohensey is really dropped by Lemoran as he gets that pass away. But you can see the extra protection that quarterback Hohensey wears. Little rib pads, flak jacket. Pass incomplete intended for Chester Cooper, who has been quiet all afternoon. The Michigan defense. Had him pretty well covered up, apparently. Uh, Michigan defensively, I think, has taken away both outside receivers, Weckbecker and uh, Cooper, and they've given them the backs out of the backfield, but Minnesota hasn't been able to get the big gainer out of that. Second down and 10. Got that throw away at Chester Cooper, right in the crowd, just as we say he's been quiet, and it's out to the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Brian Carpenter. He is one fine receiver. 
but today has been a long afternoon for Chester Cooper. Well, he finds a nice little opening right in between three people, splits the zone. Excellent throw by Hohensee to get him there. Good timing, well executed play. 17 of 32 for Hohensee, and he tries again from the 35 yard line on first down. Got his man, Stroop, who is met immediately by Brian Carpenter, a textbook tackle. However, since the pass was complete and they ran a good route, it's a gain of five yards for Minnesota. You know, you, you see a guy like Brian Carver, he's a 5'11", uh, 166 pounds listed. He runs in there, he's got no concern for his body at all. Oh, that was a good tackle. Second down and five, Minnesota. Again, Hohensee has time, but Cooper cannot make a great diving catch out of that one. Coverage by Brian Carpenter. Chester Cooper, 6'3", 202 pounds. I mean, if, if you were going to build a flanker back, that's the way you'd start. Then give him a little speed, add a pair of good hands, and sign him to a large contract. Yeah, for a lot of money. Third down and five. Owens, he has to throw. Michigan knows it. They get to the quarterback. Great catch by Stroop. Jackson and Boren and Bostic finally knock him down, but it's a first down inside the Michigan 40. Great one-handed catch by Stroop turning around to make the play. Stroop limping off, but he did make a great catch. Hohens, he delivered the ball a little bit behind him, and he just reached back, cradled it with one arm. 39-yard line, first and 10. Hohens, he looks at the defense as if to say, well, what are you doing this time? Well, I'll snap the ball and find out. Oh, it's a blitz. Throws it up, and the catch is made. Nick Davison, touchdown. A tip ball by Marion Body and junior Nick Davison, a backup at split in, turns it into six. What was it that Yogi Berra once said? It's never over till it's over. Let's Geargash gets there. Hohensee forced to put it up early. It's thrown short. Body good coverage. Gets his hand on it, but. There's Davison just standing there waiting for it. Tips right into his hands. Touchdown. That's easily the worst pass Hohensee has thrown today. I mean, he just threw it up in the air to avoid the blitz, and it came down, and Davison turned it into a touchdown. Jim Gallery gets another chance for an extra point. Way up high, and no good. Their excellent kicker missed. So with eight minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the game, it's Michigan 27, Minnesota 13. Anthony Carter, the deep back for Jim Gallery's kickoff. Minnesota scoring on the wildest of plays, the 39-yarder. Line drive that goes bouncing right to Anthony at about the 12-yard line. And AC broke it. One more cut. Two more people, he's up over the 40-yard line, super run back, and he almost had it with just the kicker. And Kerry Glenn, number eight, back to head him off. Well, had he stayed outside, made the cut outside to the right sideline, Anthony might have been gone. A 35-yard return for Anthony Carter. Gives Michigan great field position. 46-yard line, first and 10. The Minnesota scoring drive, 80 yards in six plays, under two minutes. Hohenzee to Davidson for the touchdown. Still, they trail by 14. And time in Michigan's favor at this point. Hassel the fullback, Ricks the tailback, and Ricks has some running room over the 50-yard line. Before he is stopped, Second down and five. The story of the game, Jim, in a way, the possessions for Minnesota. Coaches will say all the time, if you can force a team to drive 80 yards or 90 yards, they'll make a mistake. They won't do it. 
Minnesota has had nine possessions. The 21 yard line is the best starting position they have had on the field. Now that partly is because of mistakes by the return men who tried to run back kicks they should have left alone. On second down, Ricks again cuts back against the grain and may have the first down inside the Minnesota 45. Anthony Davis getting a hold of Lawrence Ricks. Butch Wolfolk being rested. Six yards short of 100 yards on the day. Stanley Edwards, 55 yards in 13 carries. Didn't make the first down. It's third in the yard, and Dunaway goes in motion, and Hassel fights his way through over left guard for the first down. That should be good enough. Crowd got excited when Minnesota scored, but that was all. It's as if they realize that the end is coming in this game, and they sit here quietly and watch. And I think the kickoff return from Anthony had something to do with that. I think they were up for it, and Michigan had their onside kick team on the field expecting that, and almost got it. Almost got it as they hit it down the middle, and then Anthony broke it out over the middle to the 50-yard line, and really everybody just kind of sat back down on their hands. Of course, the point is, if you're going to kick one of those ground balls, you don't want it to go to Anthony. You hope to kick it to somebody and force him to pick it up sooner, somebody who's not as accomplished a runner. Or a ball handler. Because if you get AC with a little seam at the 25, 30-yard line, look out. They measured. It's a first down. Steve Smith still going at quarterback. Thought we might see B.J. Dickey. Probably won't see the ball in the air, though, as Smith runs the option and gets it inside the 40-yard line. Finally pushed out of bounds. Says Levich is there, along with Andre Harris. Second down and six. But the clock keeps ticking, and that's Minnesota's biggest enemy at this point as they trail 27 to 13. And it's about six and a half minutes to play. Anthony Carter out of the lineup. Fred Brockington is split to the far side. Dunaway in motion. Ricks cuts back through a good opening near the 30-yard line. That's a first down. Mecklenburg makes the tackle. Ricks had his biggest game of the season as he's seen very little action because Butch Wolfolk has run so well. But Ricks had his biggest game last week against Northwestern. He went 126 yards, but I'll tell you, it's easy for Larry Ricks to get through these big holes and guys like Diario and Becker and Dixon are knocking them open. Has trouble this time. Penalty flag is down. The ball was holding. Ricks didn't get much out of the play either. That only succeeds in stopping the clock. A hold it is. That'll bump it back a little bit. But no doubt, Michigan fights its way back into the 10 race with a victory here at Minnesota. Some of that five way scramble. Well, as both said coming into this one, it's anybody's race and great position because the teams that are playing the best in the big and the people gotten by one obstacle, that being the Minnesota Golden. Smith will try to throw and he gets one away. Anthony Carter, first down. Tackle is made by Glenn Cardelli. AC almost backed it away from Cardelli, and if he had, it would have been an easy tiptoe for a touchdown. I, I think. Yeah. First down, 13 yard line, an option play. After him, after him, doubling him up most times.
just inside the two, as a matter of fact. With 4.17 left, that's sending some of the fans out of Memorial Stadium and off to their tailgate picnic or whatever else this bright sunny afternoon would hold for them because the football game is over. Rockington splits way out to the left. Hassel and Ricks, Dunaway in motion. Lawrence Ricks looking, and he slices in very close to the goal line, but a little bit short. Second down and one. Ball was right up to the edge of the line, but not over. But that's all right, too, because the clock keeps running, and uh, they score, the clock stops, they kick the extra point, and then they got to kick it to Minnesota, and you know the Gophers are going to be throwing, so Bo's happy to keep that clock rolling. I suppose if you really had great confidence in your offense, you'd run the next two plays just short. <laughs> That's a little too much confidence. A little too much confidence. Lawrence Ricks finishes it all by diving in from the one-yard line. Touchdown, Michigan. A very workmanlike job on that drive. And they put this game away, racking up the 33rd point with a chance for 34. That's up to Hajishi. Well, that's what we talked about earlier, where they had a good long drive going, but it stalled by their own mistakes. This time, the game really not out of reach, 27-13 yet. They do go the distance, using the clock, staying on the ground, getting the touchdown. They have the holding call that almost upsets them, but they bail it out with a long pass to Anthony Carter. Sheik's kickoff, or hex point attempt is good. And with three minutes and 15 seconds left to play, it's Michigan 34, Minnesota 13. Now we'll see Haji Sheik's kickoff. And it's a line drive that sails to Watson. At shortstop, he knocks it down with a hand and runs right into Tech. Carl Tech. Anthony Carter's touchdown earlier, double covered in the end zone. Anthony, again, this is just some of the things that he does to amaze you. He now has 26 touchdown receptions, third in Big Ten history, and every time Anthony catches a touchdown pass, he sets a new Michigan career record. Minnesota was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. Craig Washington was in there just a moment ago, Jim. 86, and here he comes again. What a great athlete he is. Outstanding freshman recruit from Western High School, is it, in Detroit? Uh, he expects maybe to play basketball, too, this year with the Wolverines. He is... He's that good, he kind of came on a dual scholarship. They have him split to the far side of the field. Again, eight yards to go. Now it's third down. Dickey gets a little more time. Not quite enough, however. And as he tried to run out of trouble, he is sacked. Sacked by number 59, John Wood. And Jimmy James also there again. So on fourth down, Don Bracken comes in to punt. And we are into the final 30 seconds of the game. And the little brown jug will travel back to Ann Arbor with the Wolverines. Let those seconds tick away. The best thing Michigan can do at this point. Cardelli, deep to receive Bracken's punt, if it ever happens, and it does. Cardelli signals fair kick to the 20 yard line. Eight seconds left to play. Minnesota will take it first down at the 20-yard line. Don Bracken getting away a good kick. And sealing this one up 44 yards in all. There it is, Moransky and Becker, the workmen up front. Jim, huh? you're proud of those guys. Well, they deserve that. You know, a little bit of crockery, that's about all they'll get, you know. For Hohenzee and the Gophers. Over the middle and incomplete. Intended for enough. overthrown, incomplete. Three seconds to play. Evan Cooper is the 
deepest safety, John. Brett Cochran, number 30. As Owens, he drops again and throws everything deep. Step for step with Chester Cooper. It is over. Michigan, a 34-13 winner. Larry Catterley for John Brandt Center. Thank you to George for President's Television.